I spent years looking at brains for over a hundred species, and each brain tells a new story. Studying brains is so much fun. <laughs> I'm Susanna Herculana Huzel. I'm a biologist and neuroscientist. I'm studying what brains are made of. I grew up in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. My mom wanted to question everything. She's a sociologist. I always enjoyed understanding how things worked. Going into college to study biology just seemed like the, the natural thing to do. I came to the U.S. to get a degree in genetics. There was the neurobiology section of the course. It was the kind of mind-blowing, simple question. How do you know where everything is when the lights go off? How is it that you can breathe without thinking about it? You're actually asking questions about yourself and how you function in the world. That's what got me hooked, and I never wanted anything else again. You can think of neurons as the basic information processing units of brains. When I first started studying neuroscience, if you opened any textbook, you would find that the human brain is made of 100 billion neurons, and that a bigger brain is always made of more neurons. If these are the numbers, where do they come from? I asked plenty of people. Invariably, the answer was, I don't know. I realized we didn't have the numbers. We didn't know the rules about how many neurons go into brains of different sizes. We did not have the data and I thought that I had an idea to get that. The idea I had for figuring out what brains are made of involves turning them into soup. It was a lot of trial and error. I used the blender on a frozen mouse brain. Of course, I had bits and pieces all over the place. That was a ridiculously bad idea. It sounds harsh and brutal, violent. The actual process is very much like a cooking recipe. Take a brain, chop it down and crush it in salty detergent. Keep grinding it until you can no longer see any bit of tissue. Process the entire brain. You're gonna add dye so you can actually see the nuclei under the microscope. Mix it well. Take four little drops count how many nuclei you have. If you know how big your drops are compared to your entire soup, you know very, very rapidly how many neurons you had in the whole soup and therefore in the whole brain. The first time I put the blue dye on, I had what looked like a starry night sky. It was gorgeous. The cell nuclei were very clearly separated from one another, easy to see, easy to count. That was when I knew I was in business. We found 86 billion neurons in the average human brain. It's that indescribable feeling of, I know something that nobody else in the whole world knows. The next thought is, I need to get the word out. The reaction to this Latin American woman with no pedigree who comes out saying, I turned brains into soup and these are the numbers. 
The reaction, of course, was incredulity. They thought, this cannot be true. What do you mean this cannot be true? Here are the data, here are the numbers. It was infuriating to get all this pushback. On the other hand, it makes it all the more satisfying to get to the point where people want to hear the story. It's like, oh, you're the one who figured out how many neurons we have in the brain. Like, I guess I am. My main interest is studying diversity. What are the different brains that exist? What's the range of possibilities? And it never gets old. So on the one hand, we found that the human brain is really, really boring in that it's just what you would expect for a large primate brain. On the other hand, we found that the raccoon has twice the number of neurons that you could expect to find in a carnivorous brain that it is. <sighs> Calling someone a bird brain used to be a really bad thing. That's gotta change because we found they have as many neurons as you find in a primate brain that is much bigger. There's all these questions out there to be asked. I don't ever worry about my day being boring or when am I gonna run out of questions. I am certain that I won't. It feels awesome.